Hey there, my name is Matt Kluskowski. I want to welcome you back to another episode of Your Photo Hour Look, uh, where basically I edit your photos and uh, I kind of just go through the editing process on them. So if you want to find out more, go to ononephotos.com and click the videos link. You can see all the previous episodes. Uh, this is episode number 10. And uh, you can find out how to submit your photos as well. Also, other big news on one photo 10. So the next generation of the on one apps is, uh, is, has been announced, uh, coming late October, 2015. You might even catch a glimpse of it inside of this video here. Uh, but you can head over to on one.com. There's some pre-order specials for you. So things, you know, training, um, the magazine, things that you won't get, uh, if you wait until it actually comes out. So if you want to pre-order, just head over to the website. All right, so let's start off here. I usually start in Lightroom for exposure, shadows, highlights, uh, lens corrections, noise reduction, things like that. I think it's it's the place where we want to be. Uh, shadows I kind of probably bump those up a little bit. Highlights I think we're pretty good, um, but there there's actually not too much Lightroom work to me. Most of the, of the work here in this photo is just going to be to finish the photo. I think you know um, it's with a photo like this. Would it be great if it were sunset or sunrise? Absolutely. Wish you wish you would have taken it at a different time, but I understand chances are you're at some type of an air show and uh, you get what you get. Uh, but, you know, the better light would have been awesome. Um, not having the barricade would have been awesome. But again, I understand if you're photographing them at an air show, chances are you're going to be behind a barricade of some sort. So I would have loved if you walked up to the barricade, assuming you want to keep this aspect ratio your only other choice would have been to walk up closer and uh, and maybe go a little bit wider and try to to try to you know get the ground in so where you don't have this barricade. But uh, the couple things we can do, we could always just crop it out here inside of Lightroom, like so. Um, you can go for more of like a, a widescreen type of a crop. But I'm just gonna maybe assume you know maybe assume you want to keep the aspect ratio. You got a frame that this will fit in, and you want to put it in there. So I'll show you a couple of little tricks, but. Um, First off, we'll jump into layers. So go into plugin extras. By going here to perfect layers first through plugin extras, I'm able to jump to all the uh, the different apps in on one. So of course I could crop, you know, just use the uh, the crop handles and uh, and crop that away. But we're gonna go ahead and cancel that. And uh, let's go grab the perfect eraser. So the way the perfect eraser works is a lot like content aware in Photoshop if you've ever used or even most if you haven't used it chances are you you might have seen it before. Um, but it does wonders for getting rid of large areas like that. But every once in a while you'll, you'll see it'll leave a texture behind especially in a large area. So if you want to you can just kind of give it another pass. Um, in some of those places, you know, it, it does or doesn't, it's impossible to give you um, a formula for it because sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It's all dependent on the photo. But that, that would be something you could do if you absolutely needed uh, to keep all that area. Um, I'll leave it there for now, but I think we're going to end up cropping it out later on. And I, I would probably do most of my cropping, although I can crop it right here. I'm going to do most of my cropping in Lightroom because then it's all non-destructive. So let's head over to effects because I think really a large part about this photo is finishing it off. Um, a couple things that we can do here. I'd probably take my adjustment brush, uh, set it to darken, and then that way I can go over here. To me, you know, harsh light, it's midday, you know, the ground is going to be bright. And, uh, you know, you watch TVs, you watch movies, and, uh, and you'll see that a lot of times um, they wet the pavement because they want to take the uh, take the exposure down off of it. So we can go through here and just kind of brush. Brush all that away. Like so. Um, if it's too much, it's on its own layer. So just reduce the opacity of that layer. All right. And if you look down here, you've got some other options here. Uh, add a little contrast to the layer. Uh, well, that'll help as well. A um, little bit of detail will help give it a little bit more texture. Not too much detail, though. So, and even, you know, if it, you want to kind of make it look a little bit more of a warmer light or if you want to take some of that warmth away, you can uh, you can even control uh, the color there. Let's go over here and add a, uh, add a new layer to it. I think uh, another aspect of this is going to be some dynamic contrast. 
and uh, let's go ahead and just go with the natural setting. To me, there's just a lot. There's a lot of texture back here that we don't see um, in the initial photo. So, uh, because of the harsh light, there's a lot of haze and everything back there. So we don't see a lot of it. So there's texture. We can get rid of that texture, um, or we can add to that texture here. And what I might say here is. If you want, if you kind of see it adds a little bit too much to the ground here, just take your, uh, just go ahead and take the masking brush and just go paint right over the ground. And we can pull all that texture and contrast off of there. So that's before, that's after. All right, I'll add one more layer. I, I use the filter all, all the time, but... I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to overuse it, but I'm going to use it just, just to, just to show you. Uh, there's a really neat one. Uh, sorry about that. It's under the presets section. It's down here under urban. And uh, and to me, I, like when I saw it, I was like, yeah, that kind of fits the photo. It's called Urban Sun. So it gives you a different type of a look for the photo. All right, that's before. That's after, just kind of a sunny, hazy day. So that's a, a look that you can go for the photo or you can just come back to what we had, just a little bit of the adjustment brush, some dynamic contrast, and then maybe go back over here to your filters. And because it is harsh light, it's nice if sometimes we can add a little bit of warmth to it. So some sunshine, uh, some of that sunshine filter does the trick. You can see it kind of pops the contrast a little bit too. And then, uh, and then finish it off with a nice vignette. And I don't want a strong vignette on this one, so I'm going to lower the opacity. All right, just want a little bit of a vignette on there. All right, we'll hit apply. This will take us back to Lightroom. And over here, you can see our after photo. So let's go back to the first one here. I'm just going to hit reset uh, to reset everything. We'll go to the after photo. And honestly, I, I would crop it. I would, I would get rid of some of that space down here. Uh, if you go over here to your aspect ratios, you'll see there's some custom aspects like, you know, we can go 16 by nine, which is a true uh, widescreen. All right. And we can kind of play with it there too. Um, you know, I might have gone in, in retrospect. I probably, when I was in perfect layers, would have gone over here and tried to fix some of those areas over there. We can always try it here inside of Lightroom um, with our spot healing brush. Give it a try. The, the Photoshop and, and, and Perfect Layers are going to tend to do a little bit better in places like that, but this actually is, is going to work out just fine for us here. And hopefully what you get from this is, you know, don't sweat your workflow too much. If you think it's something you should have done in Lightroom and you're in perfect effects and you want to grab a brush and darken something even though you could have done it in Lightroom, do it. If you think it's something in Lightroom that you could have done in effects or, or layers or wherever, just do it. Okay, so let's take a look here. That's our before photo, and there is our after photo. So you look, we just kind of flat, not too much texture. If you look at the after photo, we got a lot more texture, reduced some of the haze up there as well. All right, let's take a look at a portrait here, and let me reset this one. Um, overall, what I'd say is, uh, I, I don't know that we, nice, you know, uh, nice photo. Uh, I'd probably crop in on it. I don't know that we need all that headspace up there. You got a little tree kind of dangling in there. I don't know that there's any reason to keep any of that. So probably crop in a little bit. And in fact, rather than leave it like that, I think I'm going to crop in quite a bit and really just take what I think we, we really need from the photo, which is her. You know, we don't need, there's nothing too much going on down there near the ground. So I'd leave that out. We can even, if we wanted to kind of experiment, get a little creative with a little bit of an angle there. Um, we're going to go into perfect portrait because you know, we got a little bit of harsh light, um, some hot spots and everything on the face. So I'm looking at the catch light in the eye. I'm going to guess there was some lighting here. Looks a little bit harsh. Looks a little bit flat. Um, you can see that shadow over there. So we can try to, to, to pull some of that back over inside of perfect portrait. We'll do our whites and blacks here while we're here, though. So option or alt click on your whites. Option or alt click on your blacks. All right. Um, exposure wise, you know, maybe pull back just a little bit, but not too much. I think we're doing highlights and I think we're actually pretty good uh, across the board there. So I'll just leave those and, uh, and let's go ahead into perfect portrait. And uh, remember, we're going to go into uh, 10 here, but remember the workflow, which will change when, the, when the beta version is done. But for now we can go into layers and we can jump anywhere we want. 
All right, so uh, so what would I do in layers? Any cleanup? There's not really any cleanup to do in this image. You know, if I wanted to be picky, there's a little blade of grass here and there, but there's not too much cleanup to do here. So I'm not gonna worry about it. Just wanted more to show you the workflow, but now we can jump into portrait. Uh, portrait has changed. So what happens here is, you know, we click the face that we wanna edit, and then it even kind of gives you up top. It tells you, get started, click the center of the left eye. So I click click the center of the right eye, I click. Uh, if I wanna skip a point, just click skip. Let's, I could skip the mouth because she's not really smiling. I wish she was smiling, um, uh, but she's not smiling. But let's go ahead and do it because I wanna show you a little trick in a second here. But I'll click done. It's gonna find all the facial features here. It does a good job. And you'll notice if you've used portrait before, uh, it's so much more responsive to move these things around. So even if it doesn't find everything exactly, it's real quick to change. Um, but that's looking good here. I, I think the, the retouch is, is fine. I, I think it does a really nice retouch right out of the box. Um, to do any more, you know, to crank up your smoothing, you know, hopefully you're, you're with me on this one. The, the days of super smooth skin and crazy liquify retouching and everything, uh, those days are gone. Unless you're doing high-end clients and magazines and stuff. We just want a natural retouch. And I think the default settings do just that. Uh, you can go grab your uh, your eraser or any of your, your, your blemish tools and you know, we can kind of... There's a little hot spot there. I'd probably get rid of it. But I, I just wanted to show you more. Look at what a nice job it does on the evenness here. And I can get rid of that shine and kind of split the difference. So this helps account for some lighting that might not have been ideal, looks a little bit harsh. This helps account for that. And we can get rid of that, some of that shine in there and just kind of help flatten it out a little bit. But other than that, uh, the thing with the mouth though, you know, you can crank up the vibrance, even though she, she's not showing any teeth, you can kind of work with the lips here if you wanted to kind of make them a little bit more red. All right, now we're gonna jump into effects. We'll finish things off. All right, uh, what would I do here? Honestly, guys, there's not too much. I'd probably just uh, probably just go with the sunshine filter. All right, uh, I am gonna zoom out a little bit too so we can see the rest of the photo. There we go. Okay, so I think it does a nice job. You know, this was kind of flat, all the coloring and everything around here. I think it does just a nice job of bringing a little bit of sunshine into it, a little bit of a glow. Uh, you could add, you know, if you wanted to go, some things that we could do. I mean, we could throw a vignette on top of this. I think that would work really nice too. Um, and then we could always go over to our presets. You know, if you wanted to go something really different, you could go with some of those matte looks and that would work. It's a little bit of a trendy type of look, but I think just a, a simple, pure, um, see there's a little matte look for you, but I think just a simple, pure little sun glow in the background here really helps. Uh, we'll hit apply to it'll take us back. And then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna hit reset on the original photo. All right, so take a look. So that's our before photo and that's our after photo. Uh, to me, you know, just the glow and some of the work that we did on the skin there, to me that helps take some of that fake artificial lighting uh, that it looks like we have on her off of there and, uh, and just kind of helps smooth it out a little bit. All right, take a look at a night photo here. Not too much to do on this one. Uh, you know, open up the exposure a little bit. Open up the shadows. A little bit just to see some hint of detail. Option or I'll click whites and blacks just to get a white and black point. Might add a little bit of blue and a little bit of magenta and I think that'll just help the sky. Um, maybe some clarity. And then we'll come down here to detail and the noise reduction. So let's zoom in so we can really get a look here. There's a lot of color noise in there so we can get rid of that. And that's what I would do in Lightroom. I think Lightroom's the best place for that. And there's some luminance detail, which is all the green, um, grainy stuff that's left over after, okay? So uh, that takes care of, uh, to me, our Lightroom work for the photo. Uh, one other quick thing I would do while I'm here is grab the adjustment brush. And uh, I would probably just go down here and just give a quick swipe. Just over those trees. If you go too far, option or alt click to erase. Try it again, there we go. just to take some of the, the, the focus off of there. We're gonna take, a, take care of the rest in just a second. So let's go jump into layers. The only thing I would really do here is grab the eraser tool and just get rid of this. This is, there's like a camper down there with a light 
Um, I don't know what they're doing, but it's not really helping the photo. It's more of a distraction. So we got rid of that, and then we darkened those trees so they're not quite as apparent there. Uh, from here, I would jump into effects to finish things off. And really, the only there's only two things I want to do here. Um, I want to go in and use some dynamic contrast. Dynamic contrast, contrast works great on Milky Way shots like this. All right. So we're going to zoom in on not only the stars, but also the Milky Way, because I want to show you. Uh, what we can do here is we can control the level of detail under here, under the detail section. So small and medium are really going to work on bringing some detail and some contrast to those stars. And then the large is going to work on bringing a little bit more uh, to the cloudiness that we have inside of the gases in the Milky Way. Okay, so if we take a look here, I can kind of zoom back out and you can see that's the large slider and you look at what it's doing to the to the whole area up here. So I definitely think it helps out. Uh, we probably introduced a little bit too much texture into the foreground since we already did our noise reduction and it kind of looked sharp enough. So I might want to grab my uh, grab my masking brush and I can just go down here and I can mask all that texture out of the bottom. Just erase it basically from that layer. So I'm just adding it to the stars here. And then because it does look like it could be a bit strong on the top here, I'll just reduce the opacity of that layer. I'll add one more layer here and we will go down here to the photo filter. And I think a little bit of blue would definitely help there. So it kind of just brings out some of the colors in the sky and whatnot. We'll hit apply. It'll take us right back over to Lightroom. And I'll go to the original photo here. I'll hit reset. So here you go, here's our before photo and here is our after photo. So before and then after. All right, so folks, thanks so, uh, so much for joining in on this. If you wanna find out more about the series, obviously you can head to the websites and also don't forget to check out On One Photo 10 over at onone.com.